What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Help More, Sell More podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Burlingame, joined by my co-host, Joe Marcou, and it is after the new year as of the Happy new year, of this everybody. episode. <laughs> It Welcome must be. to 2022. Let's make this year epic. I'm assuming things are going great at this point in the year. We pre-record all these episodes, you guys. So we're actually recording this on New Year's Eve. And it's probably airing several weeks into the new year. So happy new year to you and your families. And we hope that you had a great holiday season. But we also hope that you're having a kick-ass January. So let's get those sales up. Let's get revenue up. And let's help more people. Speaking of, let's dive into this episode. So this is episode 17. And we are talking about buying signals. Specifically, are you waiting too long to close? And this topic actually was spurred by uh, an episode, several episodes back. Joe was talking about his his testing the water technique that he used when selling electric bikes. If you guys remember back that far, he literally would put someone on the bike and he would say, what do you think? And they'd say, oh, it's great. He'd say, so you want to take it? And 10%, I think we agreed, like it was 10% yeah. of the time One they would just do it. One out of 10 would just take it. Imagine- On a $5,000 item in, yeah. in under three minutes. Imagine if you could close a $5,000 deal in three minutes, you guys. That is what we're talking about today. There are recognizable buying signals, and there's a certain way that you're going to want to transition straight to the close. But I also want to bring up, and I brought it up on that episode, in my opinion, and this is a little bit of a differentiation of opinion, and it kind of depends on what you're selling to uh, between me and Joe, where I would argue you need a checklist. There are two to three items I require before I jump to a close. So I might need to also you know, push off the guest for a moment, like, hang on, like, but I'm also not going to force my way through the entire script. All right, there, I'm going to take a shortcut. But there's a few things I need first. So we're going to get into that on this episode today. Before we do, if you guys are listening, and you enjoy the podcast, if this is helpful for you, and you're taking action, and you're seeing results from this, please consider dropping us a five star review. Follow us on Instagram at Burley Sales at uh, actually go to the SOSDojo.com because we are changing uh, some things up as far as like our Instagram. At this point, we'll put SOS do at SOS Dojo. We'll right? just say at SOS yeah. Dojo. Fair enough. We're going to change that. that. So yeah. by this time, it's probably there. It's a new yeah. year. It's it's done deal. Joe's writing it down right now that he's going to yeah. do that. So by the it's time done. you hear this. It's done. Yep. Uh, all right. So follow us, check that stuff out, check out our programs, and you can always book a free call with us if you want to talk one on one about this a little bit more. Now, the big question for today is, are you skipping buying signals? Are you ignoring them? Are you just wasting your time and your prospect or your guests time and just trying to force your way through the entire script? That's what I want you guys to think about. Every episode, we try to put out the big question, the big overarching theme of the episode. And ultimately, it's a, it's a thought point. We want you to think about this. How are you applying this to your own selling process? Now, let's start out with some story time, because that's the other way we like to kick things off. I want you to share a story, Joe, if you will, about a time that you just plowed through the script you featured dumped or barfed all over this person. And you said, I have to get through my stuff before I can close. Do you oh have an God. example? Yeah. And the buying signal was way too obvious. Yep. Oh God, this is embarrassing. Okay. So again, I was in my <laughs> early twenties at the time. Oh, yep. so embarrassing. I'm in my exercise equipment store. Mm -hmm. This guy comes in and I, I okay. I got to be transparent. This this guy backed his truck up to the door. <laughs> he's like, ready to load he's, up. <laughs> like he's ready to load up. Okay, oh <laughs> this is just so bad. I'm just he picturing back, this right now. Just boop. He's backing up. Yeah, his he's he's got a big pickup truck, and he's oh backing gosh. it up to the front door. So like it was literally. So instead of me saying, "Hey, welcome here," I'd never seen this guy before. So yeah. instead of me saying, hey, welcome here. Is this your first time in the store? And how do you hear about us? Like go through a process? No, I had to go through. So I didn't give the, first of all, I didn't shut up. I didn't give yeah. the, I didn't ask any questions other than what brings you in today. And he said, I'm looking, I'm looking to get a treadmill, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm telling him how to sh go and shop. Like yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, like, what am I thinking? I'm telling him how to go. And if you're going to go shop for a treadmill, these are the things that you need to go look for. And these are the important features. And yep. right. 
as opposed to, well, who's it for? Who else is going to use it? How are you going to use it? Where are you going to place it? And even before going through all those questions, maybe Joe could have just asked, was this your first time here? Oh, who were you dealing with? Well, let me go get them for you because you obviously have a relationship with the person. And I'll just shut the hell up. And yeah. then, you know, Derek could have come from around back and go, hey, Jim, welcome back. So do you want to pick up that T97? Yeah, let me go get it for you. No, no, no. I had to go through the whole thing. This dude was standing there, Jeff, arms crossed, looking at me sideways. Like his eyes were also crossed, going like, WTF, man. And I wasn't shutting up. And yeah. finally, he <clears throat> said, listen, man, I've been here. Be literally, I've been here before. I'm just here to pick it up. Like, G. Joe, maybe the fact that he backed his truck up to the front <laughs> door was the giveaway. Right. Oh, God. Anyways, right. there's my that story. Uh, yeah, it, but it's true. Uh, don't don't worry. Mine hurts, too. And it's also from my <laughs> early 20s. So I was around, I must have been 21. It was like fresh out of college. Uh, that it, And it goes back to that first personal training sales job. But it was like my my first uh multi-figure sale like i had sold a few tiny packages like a, a once a month personal training which was like four like a 480 i think was the co total cost of this package right okay and this was my first sale that was 3360 so it was three thousand three hundred sixty dollars in personal training and ultimately ended up being something i was super proud of but uh i had uh she was i believe she was a middle school teacher in the area she i mean she had money like she was not only was she decently paid nice benefits but she was also married and her husband had a great job and i found this out through just conversation but i plowed through a three-page script that i had been forced to memorize by this job which i've mentioned before in previous episodes uh it's it's this the snowman scenario you guys remember right so <laughs> where, where does your body fat go on the snowman yep. right <laughs> so uh i had to draw my snowman and do the things and go through the whole process and the whole time she was literally like legs crossed turned away from me kind of like your guy turned away from you right like that's that's a signal you guys and she was like tapping her foot and i, I was like i don't know what's going on but okay so i just kept going through going was she through. listening she was, to any music no <laughs> no and, and she was just like nodding her head she was agreeing with everything i said she was all on board from the get out like and i i just kept rolling i finally got to it and she was like oh, okay finally she literally said finally and i was like what do you mean finally she was like oh i was just waiting to see like how much it's gonna be and i was like oh okay and then i showed how her much the price. time was that an hour Oh my god! It was easily an hour. Yeah. So this this three page script, you guys, <laughs> this three the three page script would take me forty five minutes to get through, and then there would be like a gym tour, and a few oh, exercises that we would go tour. through, and then like we had we had this whole thing laid out, man. So we'd have a transition to the four. Be like, all right. So next up, what we're gonna do is give you an example of what it's like to work with a personal trainer. Sound good? They say yes. We'd get as many yeses as possible. That was the whole key. Then you get out, you do a few movements, basically meant to show them imbalances in their body. Like we were pointing out imperfections on purpose and there were exercises like balance on a BOSU ball. I don't know if you guys know what a BOSU ball is, but it's like a, an exercise ball but with a flat side. So there's like a round side, flat side. It's hard to balance on, even if you have balance. Now ask a random person who's never used this device before because at the time it would have been 2010. It was pretty new on the exercise market ask them to do a squat on that. Guess what? They're not going to be able to. So I'm holding their hands because uh, we had a rule, which was be handsy without being inappropriate, which was literally like, just guide this person. So like mm. they need you. We were, we were, it was all the persuasion tactics you've ever heard of in your life. And they do squat, they fail. And we'd be like, oh, all right. So what's going on is you got some imbalances here. We need to work on your glute strength. We need to work on some, <laughs> some of your connective tissues. And, and they'd be like, what? And then you'd be like, okay, great. Oh so now God. you take them back to the table, transition back is like, great. So how are you feeling? I feel pretty good. You feel how like working with the trainer with that, that professional guidance is going to help you make, uh, be more efficient in your uh, exercise sessions. And they say like, yeah, I mean, sure, of course. Like it was all meant to just get yes, yes, yes. And then get back to the table, then close. And like I said, this lady just goes, oh, finally, all right, how much is it? And then I just showed her the price and she just points to the 3360 package and, and buys it. 
I was like, dude, what have I been doing this whole hour? Oh my God. And it, it was literally right then that I realized that this sales process was not the best sales process. Because at first, I mean, let's be real, you guys, if you've worked a sales job before, like not your business, not an independent thing that you were doing as a contractor, but you worked for somebody and you sold, they provide you with a process, right? I mean, they should 99.9% .9 of the time. They should. In that process, you're going to view as gospel. You're going to say, this is the process. This is how it's done. And that's what I was doing with this. But after that appointment, I was like, maybe this isn't the best way to sell. And like a few years later, I came up with a concept we called the no sweat intro, which was a much shorter, much shorter, like time collapsed, uh, 30 minute appointment. And I came up with like the very specific stuff that we needed in order to move forward with the sale. And that's the checklist I hinted at a little bit ago. So here's the checklist, you guys. We, we've actually brought this up on previous episodes. What we need in a coaching scenario in order to process a sale is we need some sort of like emotional tie from this client, some sort of uh, value connection to our value proposition, right? They have to see the value and see how it potentially could be good for them. Like, what's it going to do for me? What's in it for me? Right. Joe always says W I A F M. Like what's in it for them? Uh, a great what, radio what, session. It's great. What's great radio in it session. for me? <laughs> so like they want to know what's in it for them. What's the ROI, right? Return on investment. That was a few episodes back. What is the ROI for them? And if they, if they hear that, if they connect with that, they're going to buy when the value is high, they buy. So what I look for as a, an internal checklist is I either need two smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely goals, or two agitated pain points, or a combination of both. We talked about this on the positive versus negative yep. selling episode. And then I need a why. The why or the hot button, right? It's like the Staples easy button. You just press it a bunch of times throughout the sales mm -hmm. process. If I have the two what's essentially like pain points or the goals, and I have the why, then I feel very comfortable closing because I have all the information I need and I can refresh their memory. I can bring it back up to help keep that value high. I'm like constantly pushing this, like imagine like a thermometer filled to the top. It, it's super hot, right? When the value is high, but as time goes on, if we don't refresh that value throughout the sale, if we don't talk about that hot button anymore at all, it slowly decreases that, that thermometer yep. is going to below freezing now if you don't refresh that. It's a form of follow-up, Jeff. Yeah. Bring your sales process while you're talking with people, you need to follow up in terms of what's important for them so that you keep them hot. So no different that if you don't mm -hmm. close on that, you don't have them decide to move forward with you, AKA close, mm -hmm. then you got to follow up with these people because otherwise leads will fall through the cracks. And listen, we're, I, I'm still, I'm still not a hundred percent on my follow up and I have a follow up mm -hmm. system. And there's yeah. still people that I, I, you, right. So let me, let me tell you, Everybody can improve follow up, and I, uh, Jeff, you and I could t talk about that. You know, uh, like talk about a completely new episode. We could we could have an episode that's called, uh, or we could write a book that's called "Your Follow Up Sucks." However, that's a whole other that's a whole other episode. Your follow up sucks should be an episode. However, I agree. In this context, when you are live and in person with someone, I think you nailed it on the head. And that analogy of the thermometer, of seeing the temperature where they're at, and you got to mm -hmm. remind them. You're yeah. the expert. Everybody who's listening, you, I'm talking to you. Yes, you <laughs> that I'm talking to you right now, that you're listening, the listener, you're an expert in your own right right now. Whatever it is that you do, whether it's financial services, whether it you, you do insurance, whether you do fitness equipment sales, personal training, life coaching, mm -hmm. if you're a doctor, it doesn't matter. You're an expert. And as such, you need to remind people why they're speaking with you and your level of authority needs to be on high. So, yeah, like you mentioned, Jeff, when and some people don't like the rhyming thing. It's just a great way to 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 remember it. And, it, and that is this: when the value is high, people <clears throat> buy. When the value is low, they say no. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I lo I love it. Uh, 
So, I mean, you guys have probably experienced this. If you've been selling for any period of time, you've probably experienced this. When when someone's excited, they're they're stoked about what you're offering them. They they see the potential for like who they could be if they work with you, or or uh, imagine the the situation where they're not encountering these pain points that they once were. Like they can picture that. That's visual. That's uh, palpable. Like it's super easy to make a sale in that situation because they're so excited at that opportunity. And, I mean, and, and this purpose, could be with anything. And the purpose of this episode was to, you know, be cognizant of buying signals mm -hmm. so that you could literally teleport your way from going from, yeah. instead of going through step one through all the way to, let's say you had 50 steps. If you right. were given a 50 step process to go through your whole pitch blah three blah, page blah. fully yeah. memorized one hour script yep so instead of doing okay. that if you were able to see or hear or pick up on the buying signal from mm -hmm. your guest you could go from step one to 50 right there yeah and so many people are just so by the book that they have the blinders on and they have earplugs in and they're just so we want you guys to be aware of some obvious buying signals. Literally, the the guys back in the truck up to the front yeah. door. Okay, there are times, right? Or there's Mrs. Mrs. Guest who's sitting down and she's tapping her foot. Mm -hmm. Like these are be cognizant of this. How about the credit card is out and it's tapping on the table? I've seen this in stores. The credit card is out yeah. and people still are there. They become a sales prevention department, Jeff. They're talking yeah. their way out of a sale. Shut up. Like, <laughs> come on, you guys. How well, about that's a good how about this? Too. <laughs> with, 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 I've, I've been, I've been in, in a sales situation mm -hmm. where I'm asking questions to the client. I've shown mm -hmm. them the best option. And I'm, I'm just like on our previous episode, I'm foreshadowing that there may be a flow chart of objections coming. So it, mm -hmm. again, I'm foreshadowing that because I'm prepared for the worst. And here's yep. the buying signal where the couple, you know, the, the husband will, will look, look at his wife and he'll say, so what do you think, honey? Buying signal, you guys, <laughs> yeah. what do you think? He's in, he totally loves it. Yeah. So what do you think, honey? Like best move at that, that point, I'm going to back away from the mic. Okay. Yeah. Shut up. Just <laughs> let them talk about it. Yeah. So that one of the one of my little tricks here, when when I can see that there's they're on the fence, why mm -hmm. would I keep talking when I can just say, hey, you know what? Here's a five dollar Starbucks gift card. The law of of reciprocation would be, Jeff, you know, you and your lovely wife take the Starbucks gift card on me. Go ahead and buy yourselves a coffee and whatever you guys decide. Come back and just let me know. I know very well that they're going to be a yes. Yeah, I like that's that's awesome, man. That's gold, you guys. I, I love that idea. Now, let, let's get into some of these buying signals. But I think you guys get our first key point here, which is you don't have to do your whole spiel. If you have a one hour, gosh forbid, a two hour script that you have to go through or a multi, uh, you know, e exposure kind of sales process. What if you could time collapse that into a 30 minute sales process or a or two less. exposure sales process or less in, in Joe's uh, electronic bike or electric bike uh, sales scenario, right? 10% of the time he could say, so you want to take it? And they would take it. Imagine. And, mean, and, and again, coming across that. with the, so do you want to take it mean, truly meaningful. And it doesn't yep. mean that the sale is closed because at that point it just, I just want to provide some context. Yep. There are other things that these people are going to need to be able to have the ultimate buying experience and ownership right. experience. So the getting the yes, that's one thing for, yep, yeah, okay, we're going to take, let's say in, in that card. context, the bike. Or, <laughs> yep, yeah, you know what, yeah. I'm going to join your, your sales program. Okay, great. And now there's some other things that we need to cover. Yeah. Which could be, you know, additional times, additional coaching or accessories or... It, so, so just take a deep breath here, kids. Yeah. Ultimately, what Jeff is, is jumping into here is we are time collapsing and we're not taking anything away from the client. We're giving them value because we're sh what we're also doing is we're saving them time. It's not about our time. It's about exactly. their time. Exactly. 
Yeah, th these are your guests, as we keep referencing. So you should appreciate their time as exactly. much as humanly possible. Now, let's do this, Joe. Let's let's bounce some buying signals off each other. So you mentioned a few. Uh, we'll just like recap them here real quick. But the the card out is an absolutely ridiculously good buying signal. Awesome. Uh, they're ready to buy. Just close, right? What what's one from you? Uh, the the one that I love is the is the nodding of yes and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the, you don't even have to ask. You can yeah. see they're smiling yeah. and just the, there's a vibration that is Excitement. coming off them because they're literally yeah. vibrating. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like they just mm -hmm. want to get this done, not because they're impatient, but they just can't yeah. wait to tell you, I've already decided. It's obvious. Yeah. About you? I love that. The excitement is a good one. I, I would actually, I'm going to tail in that with impatience and impatience yeah. could go one way or the other. So I've had impatience be an issue of, I don't even want to be here uh, because right. they've uh, kind of already processed this in their head. And they're like, this isn't for me, in which case I've had to stop the appointment and try to get them to recenter, refocus and consider moving forward or just fire them as a guest and kick them out of there, which has happened both directions. Um, or, or on the other side, it's like, I'm impatient because yeah, like I just came in to sign up. Like I'm, just, like, I'm here just to do the thing. So just yep. provide me the price, I'll pay it, let's go. So you can jump to the close from there. What's another? Another, another signal that, that a lot of people don't pay attention to is humor. When yeah. the guest is being humorous, and I want to be very clear, they're being humorous, whether it's on like in the sense of they're not putting you as the quote unquote salesperson down. Mm -hmm. They're they're just having fun in general. Mm -hmm. They're cracking just jokes, <laughs> or they're being self-deprecating in a way where like they're like they're putting it up upon themselves. Yeah. That is such a great signal because like you know that they're having fun. And or they're kibitzing with you or another. And so that's one that I'm going to jump mm -hmm. to another one, Jeff, is when sure. they physically and I want to be very clear here because they're doing it respectfully when they physically touch you first. Yeah. When shoulder, a elbow. Yeah. When a prospect yeah. gives you the old like tap on the shoulder, pat on the back, like they're saying that they're that's a signal that they're they trust you, mm -hmm. that they confide in you. And that, in fact, that's a third, there's another example. Have you ever had this happen, Jeff, where somebody confides in you, you're having a conversation about a product yeah. or a service, and then all of a sudden they share something that would be almost deep, dark secret. Like, it's oh. like, wow, they're sharing this with me. Like, yeah, and, that, and it, does that ever happen to you? So that is, that is, uh, I, I make this joke to gym owners all the time. You're a therapist. Oh, as, as a gym owner, a bartender. Sell, yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. So like selling personal training was therapy. And I would say easily 50% of the sales appointments I've had selling personal training, ha I've encountered some sort of uh, elicitation of an emotional response. So like someone would confide in me, like you mentioned, um, a, a fear uh, an anxiety, um, some of the stresses they deal with, uh, negative body image issues, um, you know, just like being bullied as a kid. I don't know, like a million things. Huge. They've cried, uh, like like literally just Niagara Falls cried, right? Yeah. And I, I've dealt with that a lot, easily, like I said, 50% probably of the appointments I, that I've had, I've had that. I, I'm about to let the cat out of the bag here. I recently did a sales training um, at a hair salon now, right? You, mm -hmm. This is what gets really interesting for a hair salon. You want to talk about being a therapist. You've got somebody that's going to be in the chair. Yeah. If you're somebody like me who doesn't have a ton of hair, right? I mean, <laughs> the, the cut doesn't take that long. Pretty quick. <clears throat> um, hey, uh, however, <laughs> however, if think of think of some of the the women that go in, like my mom would go in, honest to God, every couple of weeks, like she does, right? Yeah, yeah. She loves that. Well, when they're sitting in the chair and you have their attention and you're asking questions and they're a regular, what can you do? And I was sharing this with 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 Shane, who's the shop, uh, the salon owner, and he's got a very great salon. And 
So he's got a little boutique in his salon. He doesn't just do hair. They've got a boutique with items. It's, it's a little gift shop. Well, they're in the chair. I said, you know what? you got to get some of these very cool, unique items that you have and just place them in the hands of the person who's in the chair. Yeah. And guess what people do? The moment that they touch an item, they feel like they own it. And if they don't want it, what will they do? They'll put it, right? Yeah. They'll, they'll just put it up you know, on the shelf. Or, or if they want to keep it, they'll hang on to it. Yeah. So it's a buying nice. signal to Shane to go, okay. And then, you, and then what does Shane do? So do you want to get that when we go? We ring you up? Yeah. Okay, I'll just put that over here for you. There you go. I like it. Make yeah. it tangible, right? Absolutely. And it, 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 some of these gift items, I just want to give you guys an idea in terms of how this, it, it, how, how could this work in w- what your business is? We want you to reflect on this. You can create these buying signals and you also have to be cognizant of the fact that they exist, mm-hmm. right? People are excited. People are happy to see you. They start, you know, kibitzing with you. They're touching you first, right? They're back in the truck up. Or you bring an item out to them and they just want to, they don't let go of it. Yeah. They don't let go of that item. Total buying signal. Right. Yeah. And so you could ask if you need to confirm as you're, you know, if you're the hair salon person, for example, you, you could say, do you want to take that? Or you could say, and you're going to take that too, right? You notice the difference in terms of my tone and my authority? Yeah. Because if I, if I said, so what do you think? Oh, I like it. Great. You're going to take that too, right? Like That's it. where the you know, elevator music comes in during the pause on the podcast, <laughs> right? See, <laughs> so, I'm okay with awkward pauses. <laughs> yeah. So just think about that. What, what, what else have you got in mind there, Jeff? Yeah. So I, I was thinking as you were talking there, another one that I've, I've noticed or realized would be them putting, like, like putting themselves in the scenario. So mm-hmm. imagining out loud, yep. just saying like, Oh yeah, I can see where this TV is going to go. I can see where this couch could potentially go. Oh, we could put that in our living room. Oh, I you know, I could train with you on on Saturdays. I'm never doing anything That's on Saturdays. Awesome. Yeah. Like if you hear stuff like that, it's obviously done. they're in. Like that's yeah. done. It is sold. Just jump to the close. And and on that note, I mean, obviously those are all great buying signals you guys should be uh, aware of or cognizant of and really be looking for. And once you recognize them, then what do you do? You have to have a transition to the close ready to go. So Joe, like how would you transition to a close if I if I back my truck up to your treadmill store? Yeah, and, and, and I, that's a great question. And I just want to preface this. Again, there's a question of context here because mm-hmm. early, just, a, just a couple minutes ago, I made reference to the fact that sometimes people are going to open up about something that's you know, perhaps very personal or surprisingly yeah. maybe dark and secretive and they share with you. Well, that, that means it's no like and trust, right? Yeah. So okay, if they know, they've gotten to know you and then all, they, they've, they've gotten to like you and now they trust in you, we can't break that trust. Mm-hmm. So there is a question of context. And there also is a question of you're still, you know, doing your business and you have a time frame. So you can say, listen, I really appreciate you sharing that with me. And you can bring the conversation back to the original reason why they're there, mm-hmm. which is right. They're there to clarify and purchase. So that you could help them with whether it's a product, a service, a program, or whatnot. And so the 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 transition is exactly that. It's it's like you want to be able to have if it's that conversation in this case, it would be, you know what, Jeff, I really appreciate you sharing all of that with me. Pause. Let's get back into the business of why you're originally here. And then ask the question: are we ready to move forward with this? And it, because you've got to be able, especially when it comes to these conversations that could be a little dicey because they're sharing deep right. with you. And I can tell you, there's a lot of retailers that have told me some of those stories. We could have an episode that is the crazy retail stories. That <laughs> I mean, it's it's like... I'll give you the gym stories to match. I yeah, you. <laughs> I can believe it. So so that transition needs to be take the authority and, and mm-hmm. go, okay, let's 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 move forward here. Because mm-hmm. you also have to be cognizant of the time. What's my time frame? I'm looking at the clock right now. 
and I, I've got to get going in a, in a few minutes. So I've got to be mm -hmm. able to say, out of respect to the people that are, are they're now coming, you know, on my next call that I've got to take in six minutes, let's do this. And at that point, yeah. the, the people that I've been speak, speaking with would, would be, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Right. And then yeah. we can move forward. How about you? What would be your transition? Yeah. So for my transition, I want a confirmation of value. Um, so typically I'll mm. ask the question like, Hey, mm. Mrs. Jones. I mean, of course, in the, in the context of what you presented there, I, I would say, Hey, I appreciate you sharing that with me and pause. But yeah. then I'm going to go with, so, you know, just to confirm the original reason you came here today was this, then I'm going to specify, this is what we discovered, which would be the, what the why. So yeah. originally you came to me because you wanted to lose weight what we discovered was you actually wanted to lose a specific amount of weight around 20 pounds. And we determined that the reason you wanted to lose that weight was here's the why. And furthermore, you put a time frame on it of six months. I'm excited for you. I think this is a great aggressive goal. I can't wait to see what you do with this. I'll build that excitement bubble a little bit. Yeah. And then I'll confirm it, with them with a yes. So I'll say, do I have that right? Actually, it's 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 a that's right. That's straight out of Chris Voss's books. Um, yeah. You know, never split the difference. So do I have that right? They say, yes, that's right. And then I'll do your question, right? So are we ready to move forward, right? At this point, I'd love to show you our amazing offers that are going to help you do this. Are you ready to move forward? They say, yes. You say, great. And then you present price. I, you know, everybody that's listening, what what Jeff just presented in terms of the the smart strategy, right? These specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely goals, and knowing the two, like the, those those what's that he's talking about, the value and the why. Being able to bring that back, and then do I have that right? Not do you have the right to ask, which you do. It's do I mm -hmm. have that correct? Am I hearing everything that you're saying, right? So mm -hmm. understanding, and we could talk about, you know, whether your client is a visual and auditive or kinesthetic, that's in a whole other episode. Yeah. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, again, communication is key. Are we communicating correctly to the guest? Once they've reiterated that, yes, you have that correct, then you simply- You have permission. You have permission to, to walk them across the line. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You say, take my hand, let's do this, and then you congratulate them what they buy. All you right, got it. so- Let's close out this episode. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for listening. Most importantly, take action. Go role play these scenarios. Same action step as last episode. Why? Because role play is an effective way of sharpening that axe, of in taking your skill, improving that skill, and maintaining that skill, right? So get out there, do that. If you want to talk individually with either of us, you can always book a free discovery call with uh, either the SOS Dojo or Burley Sales or both. We'd be happy to hear from you. And we have a free Facebook group, help more, sell more. You can go join that as well. We'll be dropping some more info in there as well as potentially some lives in the future should be a blast. Again, if you enjoyed the episode and you're seeing results, five stars on any podcast platform you're listening to, uh, Spotify just dropped five stars now. Like you can give us a five, five star. You guys, we love it. We appreciate you guys. So you and guys subscribe. are awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next episode.